What do you know about Montreal? That they speak French? Bonjour. That they love poutine, a Quebec invention consisting of French fries, cheese curds, and gravy. Oh, good. Maybe you've heard they do bagels differently up here in Montreal than we do in New York. They're smaller, denser, definitely sweeter, way lighter on the salt. Maple syrup. Yeah, you know what this is. But did you know that Quebec is the world's largest producer of the stuff? The fact is, so much of what you already know about Canada's second largest city revolves around food. That's not a coincidence. Montreal is a city obsessed with eating, one of the world's great dining destinations. But I didn't come all the way up here to show you what you already know or could easily learn from a guidebook. Nope, we're showing you a different Montreal, taking you where the locals eat. This is the kind of thing that you don't see a lot of places doing. That's incredible. Introducing you to fascinating people, creating some of the most amazing dishes I have come across in all my travels. Dining experiences that I will never, ever forget. And it's all just a six hour drive from Manhattan. On this, the 375th anniversary of Montreal, we're breaking out our passports to take you on a dining mecca getaway. Okay, first things first. If you're planning a getaway to Montreal, you need a place to stay. May I suggest Hotel 10? Splurge on the penthouse or sleep more modestly. This four-star boutique hotel has everything you need. A bar, breakfast for a fee, and location, location, location. Right off Boulevard St. Laurent, AKA the Main, as Montrealers call it. Walk just about anywhere, and if you can't, no worries. They offer a complimentary car service to your destination. First come, first served. Now that that's settled, you're probably wondering where to eat. Luckily for me, I know a local. Peter, cheers. Cheers, welcome to Montreal. Oh my gosh, I am so happy to be back here. This is my friend Peter Chase. I first got to know him through his Westchester Cafe, Chappaqua Station. Turns out he's also one of the owners of this Montreal restaurant we're sitting in right now, Etre Avec Toi, or Eat for short. Peter spends about half the year up here, so he knows a thing or two about this dining scene. I wanna know from you, a guy who's here half the year, where I need to eat. So who do I need to visit first? Well, every market has its one kind of standard bearer, right? Um, and in this market, and maybe for all of Quebec, if not all of Canada, uh, it's a chef named Normand Laprise. This is, uh, is more unique. Normand Laprise has been called the godfather of Montreal cuisine by Anthony Bourdain, a James Beard award-winning cookbook author. His fine dining temple, Toke is considered by many to be the best restaurant in all of Canada. And then he has, not too much further away, another restaurant called Brasserie Tea. Um, that's actually in this one area that's uh, been developed as this, this kind of place for all the festivals, the Place de Spectacle. Um, and he has a more casual experience there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a process. Creativity for me is more a process day to day than sit down and says what I can do tomorrow. You know, for me, I have no idea. <laughs> I need the food. I need uh, the produce. In the Brasserie Tea Kitchen, Normand prepares one of his signature dishes, a deconstructed potato, leek, and goat cheese gratin, a dish that rose to fame at Toke, now served here at Brasserie Tea. <laughs> Voila. This looks awesome. I love this. And, you know, it's one thing to do a dish for many, many years, and it's pizza or a burger, and it's, you know, but to have a dish on your menu all those years in different menus and not have people say it went out of style or anything like that, that's really incredible. That's a testament to what you're doing, is it not? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's important. Sometimes there's when people ask to move the menu, move the menu. But when you have some things working mm. well and the customer appreciate mm. it, you have to save it and put it on the menu, stay on mm. the menu. And, uh, yeah, it's, 
fantastic. Yeah, it's a, you know, simple, very light. It's very simple, simple dishes, but uh, sometimes simple is the best, flavor. though. Yeah. And like you said, if you're using great ingredients, yeah. you don't have to go overboard with it. Yeah, yeah. That's a signature of Tokay. We work on the same philosophy. All the ingredients we use at Tokay is the same here. And the brasserie, when you eat lamb here, is the same lamb than Tokay. The same form for now 12 years. And wow. For us, that's important. We don't write that on the menu, but we do it for true. To me, it's imperfect, but at the same time, it's a handmade thing. You know? Norman has been doing this so-called farm-to-table cuisine before it became a thing. In fact, many will tell you he made it a thing in Montreal when he opened Tokay in 1993. Sourcing the best ingredients also at the heart of Brasserie Tea. So while this hand-diced steak tartare, Norman's executive chef at Brasserie Tea, Andre Sterling, prepares may not have the artistic flair of a Tokay plate, it shares the same philosophy. Mm. So good. I know a lot of people are afraid of raw meat. No. But oh man, just the texture alone. Don't taste blood. You know the problem sometimes with tartare. Mm. And so the time don't eat tartare, we don't know the place. Mm. When we don't know the place, we never use uh, meat from mm. the bags, you know, from bacon bags to do tartare. No, so meat no. does not. You acceptable. break down the whole animal. That's not acceptable. This is simple, classic brasserie food executed yeah. to the highest level. Yeah, yeah. This, you know, to be highest level for me is a prize. It can be on, a, on the uh, bistro, it can be on an upscale restaurant, it can be in the uh, fast food restaurant if you use the best elements. Over the years, since Tokay opened and then you opened Brasserie Tea, how have you seen Montreal's dining scene evolve? involved uh, but it go in the good way now we are on the way when I start and one of the first one you know to be ready to bring the the, the freshness from the local people from here you know I'm from here and from the I'm from the country and uh, try to bring all the food from here and now I see the new generation of the young chef is all people coming from here with an identity with a personality but cooking with food from here. Why do you think people now are becoming, who don't live in Montreal, are becoming obsessed with the dining scene here in Montreal? That's a very, for me, is a city, our, a very big personality with the creativity, not only on the cooking food, you know, but on a different part of the uh, of work. But Montreal, for me, is very special. I like Montreal. A lot I, of original people, original characters doing original food. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, with, but with creativity and sensitivity. Back at Etra Vectois, my good friend from New York and part-time Montreal resident Peter Chase drops more local restaurant knowledge. If you're the godfather of Montreal dining the way Norman Laprise is, I'm assuming you have some godsons and goddaughters running around the city doing their thing? Most definitely. Um, a couple that come to mind uh, are the two co-chefs and co-partners behind Montreal Plaza. It's the sidewalk, like... <laughs> We pass everywhere, so small. Peter's referring to these two, Cheryl Johnson and Charles Antoine Cret. Toke alums. <laughs> Charles serving as Normand's second in command for many years. The thing I like most about their restaurant, besides the design and the atmosphere, um, they're having fun. I mean, uh, the, the, the night I was there last, um, there were three of us, and we sat down at a table of four, and the fourth guest for us was this Elmo doll sitting there. <laughs> and we're, we're underneath this upside-down house, and, you know, that was just where it began. In other words, these two will take you for a ride. You know, it's like a circus, uh, and they're clowns. <laughs> really, <laughs> truly. But they can cook. What's up with Elmo? It's just, it's, uh, because Elmo is the favorite character of Cheryl, and there's something between Elmo and Cheryl that I know they kind of look alike. You see what I mean? No, but in terms of the face. No? Nope. They're both cute. That's a, yeah, 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 that's exactly what I was about to say. If you haven't figured it out by now, Charles and Cheryl act like siblings. Also, and I say this in the nicest, most respectful way possible, Charles is crazy. I would like to say <laughs> We can be. Okay. Beep. Crazy like a fox. Actually, there's more wine here. <clears throat> I'm lazy and I'm trying to make her more lazy. 
and just crazy fun. Yes. The wonderful, the, the wonderful life of television. You say <laughs> clash, and somebody is removing it. What is going on over here? This is the Quebec alibut, fried. Because everything that, that fried is good. Strawberries and tomatoes. Most of the green they come from my godmother uh, garden. You know. Mmm. You know it's funny. I once had a dish with tomatoes and raspberries, and it's one of those things that most people don't think of pairing, but mm -hmm. then when you actually start thinking of it, it really makes sense, because you have notes of sweetness and tartness and acidity, and they, and they play off each other so well. Mmm. These are Wilkes in miso butter. Mmm, that's a flavor bomb right there. Wow, that's so good. What, what is this over here? These are urchins. Uh, underneath it's urchins, raw urchin with a little bit of urchin cream, shrimp powder on the top. Like, I, I don't even have anything I can compare that to. I mean, that's just, that's a one of a kind. You guys obviously have a lot of fun with one another, but th this, is, this is a lot of work for you, Jeremy. I mean, I, I see scribbles all over your hand there. Are you just like taking notes all day? Like, what's going on there? It's my little reminders. I would never survive. <laughs> that's like doing Charles Laundry. <laughs> Babysitting shawl. Yep. Change his diaper. Make his coffee. Yep. As if we hadn't had enough food. Wait, there's more. I want a bacon and I want a beef. Like, let's go bacon. Bring the beef. I want to say. What is going on? Bacon, bacon, Canadian bacon. <laughs> they don't force you to wear that, do they? No, no, no. They uh, want we, to no, we pay for it. For it. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> How much of this have I had? Am I seeing things? Not enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, not enough. What I'm seeing, besides a server dressed as bacon, is braised beef short ribs served with, yep, local strawberries. <laughs> this is so soft and tender. I mean, look at that. <laughs> mm. I know we're obsessed with strawberry, but when the season starts, Strawberry fields forever, my friend. Like, wow. If nobody, anybody that doesn't want to eat strawberry in the restaurant, they can leave. You know, especially when season starts, like asparagus or like morals. If like people complain, add like four times morals in my dish. How about you leave? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's like you're eating morals, like or like super strawberry when you just start. Or there's a but lot you don't of have asparagus. Like, yeah, there's a lot of asparagus. Yeah, but your mom is ugly, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but for real. There's things worse in life. There's people that cannot eat. It's okay to eat four times, like perfect seasonal asparagus. And then, and then. Yeah, the strawberries are insanely sweet and fantastic. Super good. You guys know where to eat. Where, sh where should we go next? Uh, I think tonight you have to go to see Marc André Hogan in Beaufort. Why do I need to go there? Because he loves grappa. <laughs> <laughs> Hugin and Beaufort, like Montreal Plaza, a newer restaurant that's been a critical darling, and it's off the beaten tourist path. Chef owner Marc Andre Jeté has been compared to Norman Laprise, there's that name again, for the way he approaches his dishes. But in this kitchen, there's a twist. Wow, how hot does this get? It gets to a, a thousand degrees. I feel it on my face. A fire pit, which kisses just about everything on this menu. From a show-stopping local lamb for two, the best lamb dish I have ever eaten, to the fresh squid that goes in their house-made strozzapretti pasta, the squid cooked directly on burning wood coals. This is the kind of thing that you don't see a lot of places doing. That's incredible. The pasta also gets topped with chorizo, pickled fennel, chorizo oil, preserved lemon, butter, chives, and salt, and is served atop a fennel frond puree with pine nuts. That might be a little bit too big a bite, but eh, you know what? You're only in Montreal. Yeah, once. Every now and then. Yeah. Mm. Wow. First thing I noticed, perfect al dente. Yeah. On that pasta. 
It's très apprécié. That's what I like about them. Texture-wise, they're the best. The sauce gets coated around them, and and their texture is so fine. Yeah. Oh, and everything is so subtle and harmonious, and and it comes at you in waves. This dish, it's like you get like the chorizo and the smoky elements at first with the squid, and then on the back end you get that lemon and that sweetness. Yeah. That's that's skill right there, and that, that is just yeah. skill. And you know this restaurant. It's not the kind of restaurant that you're going to see in some guidebook, because the guidebooks only focus really on the touristy areas, mm -hmm. old town and whatnot. I mean, this is really where Montreal leads, is it not? Yeah, we're a destination restaurant. People who wants to, who knows our food, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna travel to our restaurant, and that's what we like about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's definitely worth the trip. So Peter, when I was here last summer, I had two really outstanding meals. One of them was here at Etre Vectois, and the other was at a place called Notkins. Ah, yes. Daniel Notkin. If Norman Laprise is the godfather of, of Quebec cuisine, uh, Daniel Notkin is 100% the, the godfather of all things oyster. I mean, he knows everything about bivalves you can't even imagine. If a wine could change every week, that would be an oyster. Daniel Notkin is Canada's best oyster shucker, a Guinness World Record holder, judged for his speed and proficiency. He also owns this place, Notkin's, a gorgeous glass box of an oyster bar, where Daniel has agreed to take me up on a challenge. I was thinking we could put you to the test. Okay. I wanted to see about how many oysters you can shuck in a minute. Okay. And since we're in Montreal, we're going Canadian. Raspberry Point oysters out of Prince Edward Island. Briny with a slightly bitter finish. Ready, set, shuck. Oh yeah, look oh, at that, look at that. First one of the look day. That, look at that, look at that. Okay, here we go, let me try to. Mm. I feel like I love Lucy. Mm. Still got bivalve in my mouth. Mm. 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 Oh, I can swallow it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I need more stick on this knife. Mm. There might be a shell on that one. Yeah. Mm. I thought I'd be able to keep up. Mm. I gotta just swallow whole. These are fantastic, by the way. They are very good oysters. Mm. Look at me, I'm falling behind. I gotta double fist them. Oh, that's tough. Mm. Mm. Another one. Okay, this is gluttonous. Yeah. Time. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just want to put it in perspective here. An oyster is a pretty easy thing to eat. I still have three I did not get to. And you saw I didn't do a lot of talking. Three, three, six, three. Seven, so that's 12. So you just 12 did 12 in a minute. You just chucked a dozen oysters in a minute. It's not bad. Should have been a little faster. I have nine oysters in my belly that I ate in a minute. I, I feel like Kobayashi with hot dogs or something. like. Yeah. Joey not, Chestnut, my gosh. That was not bad. I should have been a little bit faster, but it's, uh, so it's, uh, it's good. We'll and make some alterations. You know, too. it's amazing because I go to places where people shuck at a normal pace and they can't shuck properly. They can't separate it from the shell. They can't get it that, that perfect clean. Because that, that, that's such a huge thing with the oyster experience is having it shucked properly. Yeah, I have a thing with uh, my uh, staff and my trainees and my shuckers who do an amazing job. And when they started out and I go over and I have a little judgment stick and I look at the oyster and there's a shell and I take out the shell and I, I just put it on their arm and I say, okay, if you can feel that on your arm, imagine how that tastes in your mouth and you give a tactile sensation of, yeah, even the smallest little grit and an oyster will ruin that experience for you. So we want to make it as clean as possible. Absolutely, and you know, it's amazing because you're going so fast. Like if you make a mistake, yeah, it's gonna hurt. I've had a couple. This this is this is sharp. This is no joke. No, that goes through stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, something is happening in my body right now. I, I've never had. Well, it's been great shooting with you. That many oysters in me at once. <laughs> uh, mind if I use your restroom? You can use whatever yeah. I have. Is all yours, and it's an uh, uh, absolute pleasure. Yeah. All right. Uh, I need a, I need a little moment here. There you go. All right. Where we go? What is this? 
Are you serious? Is this really a porta potty? I'm gonna get a shot of this. Let's see here. All right. What is this? Let's find out. Cheers, Rob. At Peter Chase's Etre Avectois, they do something called the Eat Feast. If you like the idea of planning a big party in a foreign city for some of your closest friends, this is the way to go. Seafood Tower, that put most to shame. If it's of the sea, oh yeah, it's here. That's fantastic, that's going up. Is that right? It's insane. Got pork? Um, yeah. Suckling pig in all its glory. Plus, just for fun, some pretty plated pork chops for Peter and me. Throw in beer, champagne, a DJ at the table, and a group of very attractive complete strangers, and you have quite the dining experience. See, so you brought a, a few of your closest friends, Peter. Just a couple. You know, a lot of them couldn't make it. It's a school night, you know. <laughs> this is some party. You guys really do know how to party in Montreal. You know, bring your group to us. <laughs> we'll feed them. Call us the Beast Beast. That's insane. It's incredible, right? Montreal has a reputation as a party town, and it, it parties. But, you know, there's, there's for people who are not looking to have a, a party or something like that, you can come here and just experience so much that it's just so different. When I first came here about 14 years ago, everyone said, oh, if you don't have time to go to Paris, go to Montreal. It's like being in Paris. But Montreal's Montreal. It's not Paris. And the food and the people, they're cool back by. I mean, it's really its own thing. And I don't think people really say that anymore. I think they're starting to appreciate what the people in Montreal and Quebec are all about. What are they all about? Wow. The first thing I noticed when I got up here is that people care for each other and service inherently is provided with warmth and caring. And we don't see that. You don't see that. In my experience, you don't see that in Paris. But you see that in Montreal. So you travel a lot. Where does Montreal's dining scene rank? Wow. Interesting question. You know, I take the whole thing, and, and when it comes, what it really distills down to is the spirit. So from a spiritual level, um, I think it ranks higher than you'd expect, much higher than some of the top-tier cities. It's up there in my top three. It punches above its weight. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great way to say it. It really does. What I got here is a chocolate ball with some ice cream and a whole bunch of stuff in there. This is a sweet finish to our dining mecca getaway. Montreal is not always the prettiest city, but boy, does it have character in spades. Here, people want to feed you, want to show you what their part of the world has to offer. Great produce, great food traditions, and new ones too. They're proud of their heritage, where they've been, and where they're going. Take me with you, Montreal. It's a ride I can't get enough of. Bon appétit. Thank you.